the card that we use that will get you a free night every single year. Pays for itself. These are seven must-dos before your next Royal Caribbean cruise. And if you don't do all of them, you might not make the ship. Number one is after you have your cruise booked, make sure you have everyone's passports and birth certificates. Now passports, make sure they're not expired. And not just not expired, but they should be six months or more left after you return from your cruise. Now, you are able to use your birth certificate in some instances. Those are closed sailings. What is a closed sailing, you ask? That is when the ship leaves the U.S. and returns to the U.S. For instance, if you're taking a Caribbean cruise and you leave out of Miami, you go to the Caribbean and you come back to Miami. That is a closed sailing. Therefore, you can use an official birth certificate. You know, the ones with the raised seal. Make sure it's not a copy, photocopy, or anything like that. That doesn't work. Now, a passport is by far superior. Now, the reason why the passport is superior is for a couple different reasons. One, you can travel internationally. So if I want to do an Alaskan cruise out of, say, Vancouver, Canada, and then go to Alaska and come back, I can do that. Otherwise, I would have to go out of Seattle and return to Seattle. And of course, traveling overseas. Now, the biggest reason to have a passport is if something should happen while you're in another country, you can't easily get home without the passport. So let's say you're in Cozumel. Did you know the closest US embassy to Cozumel is an eight hour drive? No, thank you. So if at all possible, go ahead and get a passport now. Now I understand a lot of families with young kids don't have passports. Raise your hand if you're one of them. Leave a comment below if you're going to be getting that passport soon. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and leave a comment now. And the last reason why I really like the passport is because it makes disembarkation so much easier at a port such as Miami or Texas where they have facial recognition. When you disembark, there is a separate passport line then there is a birth certificate line. So when we bring our kids, we have to go to the birth certificate line. If you get off when most people do at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., that line can really back up. But if everyone has passports, you can go to the passport line. It has facial recognition. So you literally just walk right off the ship and it just recognizes you and you're good to go. Off to the Uber, off to the airport. And the second thing that you must do before your cruise is go ahead and make sure you have your reservations linked if you're traveling with another party or that you're just going at the time that you want to go. So there are two different types of reservations. There's traditional dining, which is at 5.30 or 8 p.m. seating, or my time dining. Now there's advantages and disadvantages of both. The nice thing about traditional dining is you have the same table, the same servers, and the same time every single night. Now traditionally, we like traditional dining at 5.30 p.m. However, when we bring our kids, we do the mind time dining. And the reason for this is as follows. Kids club doesn't open until 7 p.m. So we drop the kids off at 7 p.m., which is after we feed them in the wind jammer. By doing this, my wife and I get to have date night every single night by ourselves. Now, we take this one step further. And I'm going to go into more detail about all the tips on embarkation day next week. But the first day that you get on the ship, you go to the main dining room and you ask to have a 7.15 or 7.30 my time dining reservation every single night. And if you'd like, you can even request the same server and the same table. That way you have my time dining with a traditional dining timing experience. That's the best of both worlds. Okay. Moving on. Number three, what to purchase before the cruise. Once when you book your cruise, you're gonna be able to log on into the cruise planner. Pro tip, use the desktop. It's much easier to navigate than the app. Now, you pretty much wanna book everything. So things such as excursions, drink packages, water, coffee cart, internet. This is what my family does. Every single time I book uh, 12 or 24 pack of water 
We bring our own water bottles and fill them up for free, but I like to have some water in the room for the middle of the night. So if you haven't seen my video yet on how to get cheap internet, make sure you look in the description below for the link to that video. Not only the internet, but also coffee card. There's a 10 punch coffee card in there. You know what? It's a 15 punch card. I'm gonna have to start over. Now the other thing that my family and I always get is the coffee card. It's about $30 and it's a 15 punch card. Now with 15 punches, you can get 15 small drinks or a combination of medium and large drinks and get less than 15. For instance, medium and large drinks typically have two shots of espresso. So therefore, it's gonna charge you two punches for that. The other nice thing is my wife and I can share this coffee card. And as you'll see, we didn't use them all. I save it and I bring it on the next cruise. Be sure to check the video next week for all the tips on embarkation day, including where do you pick up this coffee card? Don't make the mistake I made. Finally, make sure you book any excursions you want as well and specialty dining. If you're a new cruiser, don't worry about specialty dining. I'd say take at least five cruises before you give that a try. But excursions, don't just wing it, get off the ship and try to figure out what you wanna do. Book what you wanna book. First and second time cruisers, I always recommend to go ahead and book through Royal Caribbean. That way you're guaranteed to get back to the ship on time. If you know you want the drink package, if you know you want to go on an excursion, if you know you want to get the internet, go ahead and book it now. And then just check back periodically to see if the price drops. If the price drops, you simply cancel it and repurchase it for the lower price. So just keep track of the price you paid or go look in the purchase history section and just keep an eye on the prices. And must do number four is to check in 30 to 60 days before your cruise. And if you do this and you do it right, you can board the same time as a suite guest, even if you're staying in an interior room like me. So the way this works is 30 to 60 days before, you're gonna be able to check in. Now it's gonna have you wanna fill out a bunch of different information, but you don't need to fill all that out right away. You can simply select the time that you want to board the ship. So on check-in day, go ahead at 12.01 a.m., check in and select the earliest time that you want. So oftentimes 10.30 is an option if you book close to midnight on check-in day. If you wait a couple of days, you might not be able to board the ship until like 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, don't forget that check-in time is whatever ship time is. For instance, if you live in Colorado in your mountain time, but you're flying to Miami, Florida for your cruise, you have to wait until 12.01 Eastern Standard Time. Ask me how I know. Yep, I made that mistake. So, before your cruise, you'll be able to log on to the cruise planner and it's gonna tell you the check-in date and just make sure 12.01 ship time that you're gonna log in and that way you can select the earliest time. You can do that for yourself as well as everyone, anyone else in your party that has a reservation linked. And remember, just fill out the boarding time at 12.01 a.m. Don't worry about all that other information and click save. And must do number five is, how do I reserve shows before the cruise? Well, many or most of the Royal Caribbean ships, you can't, but a lot of the popular ones you can. So for instance, all the Oasis class ships, all the Quantum class ships, and all the brand new Icon class ships, you can book your shows and reservations before you board. As of right now, this happens on the first day of the month and the month before your cruise. So, you can book the Aqua show or any of the Broadway shows or the comedy show. Now the two most popular shows that I see that fill up are the comedy show and the Aqua show. The comedy show only has seating for 100, so make sure you book that early. Now. Don't sit in the front row if you're in the comedy show. You're gonna get heckled, and it's adult comedy. You're not gonna enjoy it. And if you go on the aqua show, don't sit in the front row. You're going to get wet. Okay, first few rows, don't sit there if you don't wanna get wet. Now, if you somehow reason wanna go see a show and you didn't get booked for it, that's okay. You can still show up 20 or 30 minutes before and stand in line 
and once when all the reserved people go through and get their seats, they'll let the people that don't have reservations go ahead and sit down. Now the comedy show, that doesn't work real well for, because like I said, there's only about a seating capacity of maybe 100 people on most ships. Aqua show, I've had very good luck getting in. And any other show, it's relatively simple. And the sixth thing that you must do before getting on your ship, or you might miss it, is book your flight and hotel for the day before you get on. All too often, people want to fly in the same day. I am guilty of this. I used to do this all the time early in my cruising career. However, we now always fly in the day before. I don't care if you have the first flight in the morning that is direct and nonstop to your destination. If there is weather delay, a mechanical whatever, and you don't make your ship, you are not going to be a happy camper. And you got no one to blame but yourself. Now don't be too thrifty and still fly in the day before. And book a hotel. You're going to spend one, two hundred dollars. I know you are. And if you don't want to pay for the hotel room, do what I do. I sign up for the Marriott credit card. Yes, it has an annual fee. Uh, one of them that we have is $85 and then there's another one as well. But with that, you get a free night every single year. So for the price of the annual fee, my wife and I can fly to Florida, get there a day early, and pay the annual fee or nothing, free, whatever you want to call it, for the hotel room. I'm going to leave a link below in the description for the card that we use that will get you a free night every single year. It pays for itself. And finally, the seventh must-do thing before your cruise. You need to buy something new, like a new dress for the wife, a polo for yourself, or some shoes. I don't know why, but I like to buy my wife a new dress before each of our cruises. And for myself, I usually go with a polo and or some new shoes. So buy one, two, or all three. Leave a comment below which one you're gonna buy. And if you don't know how to get the best price on the internet yet, make sure you watch the video here. Thank you, this is Brian, tips for cruisers. Traditionally, we like traditional dime timing and we go at 5.30 uh, 5.30 a.m. We do like, now traditionally, we like traditional dining timing at what to do before. So, if you haven't seen my video yet about, so, if you haven't seen my video yet and how to get the best price of internet, be sure to look here or in the link in the description. <laughs> be sure, so if you haven't seen my video yet and how to get the cheap internet, be sure to check the comment section below.